Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. The back and forth has got me so messed up. Don't ignore the signs we've had enough of the whole damn thing that we got going. You hold the strings without me knowing. Why do I? I am here at the end of the world, aka the Light Loom Canyons, and that is the Ford EcoSport Thunder. Hi guys, and welcome to another vlog. This is the key of the car, and the EcoSport looks splendid in the Thunder treatment. As you can see up front, a lot of changes have happened, but straight away, let's open the engine bay. Now this happens to be the diesel engine of the vehicle, the 1.5 liter diesel. There you can see there's insulation here. The motor is a little loud when you open the hood, but you know what? It's refined on the inside. Lot of changes on this car to make it look sporty. This one actually replaces the signature trim. It's based on the titanium. You can see you get the gloss black finishing on the grill. This gloss black finishing here as well. And there's this gloss black finish here under the fog light. Meanwhile, in the headlight too, the projector headlight also gets the black finishing. It gets the LED DRL. And of course, you get the towing hook here. Car looks splendid. It gets this black color decal on the hood, giving it the dual tone treatment. The 17 inch wheels also get the gloss black finish. These tires happen to be 205-50-17s. They do look good. Meanwhile, you also get a side decal here and EcoSport written here. Meanwhile, the car does look splendid from the side because you get a lot more gloss black finish like on the outside rear view mirrors as well as well as on the roof. And you get these roof rails which aren't functional by the way. You get a spare wheel cover which is again finished in gloss black. EcoSport written here. From the rear too, the car looks really nice. It gets a rear spoiler too. Thunder written here to tell you about the variant of the vehicle. And I love the design of this car. It looks really very, very, very nice indeed. All right, a quick circle around the car, sort of a walk around. Yeah, black does, you know, highlight the car, especially in white color. Opening the boot, press a button below. You can see the boot is actually big enough. However, the door swings to the other side. So it's a bit of an effort to close it. Yeah, that is some effort and boot is decent size there's a parcel shelf here the seats also get the 60 40 split so you know you can carry a lot more luggage inside the vehicle the door pocket will accommodate one bottle here meanwhile as you can see there's a lot of brown treatment inside so you get this brown stitching there along with a lot of brown inserts here in the seats too meanwhile door pads also get the brown treatment getting inside let me tell you the rear seat is comfortable but leg room and knee room isn't the best in the segment however this is scooped out increasing the knee room meanwhile there are magazine holders here you can see this stitching so this stitching has been used beautifully because you can see it in many places inside the car floor is almost flat three people can sit here and there's good amount of headroom on offer as well you know what it gets this chrome door handle on the inside and this car has done only 300 kilometers when i got it it had done only 150 kilometers i'm actually doing the run in in fact i removed this sheet from the sunroof cover i removed the sheet from the infotainment system as well so yeah it's a brand new car here i'm driving it in the northeast feels really nice passive entry on both the doors just put your hand inside it will unlock no need to press a button front door pockets are large enough you can see you get this scuff plate as well on the front doors eco sport written right there meanwhile the mats also say eco sport on this car and again you get this beautiful brown stitching brown inserts meanwhile brown inserts on the door pads as well that's not all on the handbrake cover as well you get this beautiful double stitching and there's this brown shade here in the center console brown shade here over the glove box the glove box is decent size that's a first aid kit and since this car is based on the titanium trim and not on the titanium plus it doesn't get the sync 3 system but this is a bigger 9 inch infotainment screen it gets navigation as well this is the reverse parking camera which is big enough it gets guidelines but they are not adapted it gets rear parking sensors no auto dimming inside rear view mirror there's a sunglass holder here the light placements here and right here you get a mirror along with a light here same is not the case on this side because there's no mirror there's no light the steering wheel is nice to hold in fact you get this beautiful stitching here too meanwhile these are the controls for the audio system these are the controls for that multi information display which is quite expansive because you can get into a lot of functions there it gets a digital speedometer it'll tell you distance to empty it'll tell you real time fuel economy and because it gets this chrome line around the speedometer as well as the tachometer it does look nice and premium unlike the lower trims which miss out on that and looks a little bit vanilla for my liking as you can see quality of the cabin is really very nice twin cup holders here there's a space to keep your key right there you can keep your key there's a proper key slot it seems 
yeah it's just not fitting right now so i think it's more of a coin holder than anything else you can see the space to keep stuff here and there's this soft vinyl sort of a treatment on the front center armrest and this thing is quite deep yeah it is very deep however it's a little bit too narrow for my liking meanwhile as you can see it gets air conditioning which happens to be an automatic climate control system this is the traction control button two usb ports and this is the hazard light switch which is quite funky actually engine start stop button these are the controls for the wipers this is the control for the indicators the horn is actually quite nice and the front seats are very comfortable too so plenty of changes on the inside because it also gets a sunroof yep it gets a sunroof in order to open the sunroof you have to press this button press it once and the sunroof opens brings in a lot of airy feeling inside the cabin in fact the cabin itself gets this dual tone treatment which looks splendid indeed brings in a lot of light through the sunroof when you open it or even if you open the sun blind meanwhile there's a sunglass holder here and these are the lights inside the car so good amount of lights too the car's air conditioning works brilliantly well even in this fluctuating temperature here you can see these are the controls for the headlight this is for the fog light and this is to increase or decrease the intensity of the instrument cluster so here i put it into minimum and now i put it into maximum in order to open or close the car you can press either of these buttons these are the controls for the outside rear view mirrors and these are the controls for the power windows the car feels quite well put together it feels very rugged and the wipers also work brilliantly well a lot of spray over there this good amount of headroom on offer even under thigh support is great you can see the pedals also get this beautiful treatment yep they are nice and grippy there's a dead pedal here too so in terms of driving this car is absolutely splendid or is it well let's get driving right away all right we are all set to go which means turning off the air conditioning turning off the traction control turning off the hazard light getting into first gear revving the motor revs all the way to 5000 rpm and off we go wheel spin yes red lines all the way to 5000 rpm and that is why i just love this engine this 1.5 liter engine whichever car ford has put it into it is just fab it is just mind-bogglingly fab okay 100 ps of power and in the echo sport it makes 205 newton meters of torque 0 to 100 kilometers per hour takes around 11 and a half seconds but it's not just the performance from this diesel engine which is such a joy it's also the handling from this car it is easily one of the best handling cars in the segment it offers so much feel around the corners yes ford is actually Actually made it soft to make it more compliant compared to earlier and added a little bit of slack to the steering as well however still this car is such a joy to drive because there's so much feel and feedback the steering is a joy to use yes a little bit slack in the center position but still it is such a fabulous car to drive i mean body roll is very well contained and on 17 inch rims yes it is slightly on the stiffer side yet the ride quality is quite compliant around the corners okay i don't need to talk you can just see how well it goes how much compliance composure it has and of course the brakes are also very strong on this vehicle you can maintain the line pretty well this car is such a joy to drive absolutely love it i mean you can maintain such great lines look at it look at it go i mean that is absolutely fab now i obviously came on this very road with the hyundai venue i didn't have much fun because the handling isn't that great but the echo sports handling is absolutely mind-boggling in comparison because it just gives you so much feel and feedback it is after all a ford and and obviously the suspension has been softened a bit but still it is on the stiffer side which is a good thing because ride quality is quite compliant yes sharp bumps catch out the car but for the most part the ride quality is very compliant indeed and the brakes also offer sure footage stopping power nose dive is well contained under heavy braking and the motor although it gets vocal it likes to rev it likes to rev all the way to 5000 rpm but more than that the motor is very drivable low end is good turbo lag is well contained and changing directions well look at the this it absolutely gives you so much feel and feedback as well all right i can see an s over there and here i'm in third gear itself it just pushes along mid range is strong the drivability is great because turbo lag is well contained and top end is also there in this motor now obviously top end isn't as great as say the mid range because in the mid range you get sort of a kick in the pants feel overall the motor and the chassis everything is so well balanced in spite of the car being one of the oldest in the segment the eco sport fails to show its age in terms of driving dynamics it's still one of the best just look at it corner one hand you go through so smoothly so nicely well contained body roll obviously there's some amount of roll because this is a tall 
car but still it manages to drive so well which puts a massive smile on my face each and every given time absolutely love this car absolutely there's only one gripe which i have there's no diesel automatic and if there was a diesel automatic we would have bought another one in our family we had an echo sport uh, similar top end model 2013 we sold it off because we wanted an automatic and unfortunately the echo sport wasn't available with an automatic first gear having the motor left to 5000 rpm you heard that wheel spin didn't you it does spin its wheels a lot because there's so much grunt on offer even lower down the gearbox is such a joy to use it's smooth shifting the clutch is also on the lighter side and in gear acceleration is great as well in fact right now i'm in fifth gear here the motor is spinning just under 2000 rpm as i get into the gas it responds instantaneously which means that overtaking traffic on the highway at higher or rather triple digit speeds is no issue at all here coming to a corner downshifting into third third is good enough and just look at it go all right it just maintains its balance so well offers a huge smile on the face now how does it compare to the rivals which have come in the segment because there are a lot of rivals okay i remember this corner i remember this very point in the venue as well and this car just glided through it ground clearance is no issue at all this is an urban suv obviously it's not capable of off-road you don't expect that to be but ford could have offered four wheel drive as an option considering they already do it in other markets that would have been a nice usp although the target audience is very small in this segment who are going to opt for four wheel drive here again with the gas motor is vocal in a good way as you get past the mid range into the top end and the pull is nice smooth and mostly linear although in the mid range you get a slight kick in the pants feel as well steering is really very feelsome okay it's not in the same league as older fords which just offered way more feedback but then the older fords like the fiesta as well as the old figo had a hydraulic steering this one is an electric steering so there is a little bit of a compromise here but efficiency improves and this motor is also very efficient because when i had it for long term the echo sport s that time it was returning a mileage between 15 to 16 kilometers per liter which is quite respectable considering 17 inch wheels i mean bigger tires obviously offer a good amount of grip as well however you know you always tend to push it hard and fast because of the punchy nature of the motor here we are into first gear revving the motor grip levels are actually quite nice and obviously the wide tires help i'm glad ford was not like okay let's only give small tires because fuel efficiency is the name of the game although fuel efficiency is the name of the game but still driving fun is something which few people look after and look for actually and that is what you get with the eco sport just look at the composure yes it's brilliant this is such a fun to drive car indeed now the eco sport has seen a price reduction which makes it more attractive and they also launched the thunder edition which i'm driving right now which is slightly more appealing considering all the cosmetic tweaks makes it look slightly more fresher than before although you know i would have really appreciated if this edition would have been available with the eco boost engine because that eco boost engine is an absolute terrific motor but the 1.5 liter petrol is also great it is paired to an automatic gearbox as well now that automatic gearbox is not available in the thunder either so you only get manual trims now the price of this car happens to be 12.9 lakhs on road mumbai and you get a lot of kit for the price However, I just can't complain because no other car in the segment is as fun as the Echo Sport. It is just such a hoot to drive and of course feels sporty as well. Could have been a little bit more practical in terms of offering space and you know the tailgate opens the other way. That is also a sort of an issue because in tight parkings that's not the best thing to do. But other than these smaller issues, as soon as you get behind the wheel you forget everything because that's how fun the Echo Sport is to drive. Anyways guys. I need to remove this. I don't know why it's there. Yeah, it's kind of stuck. Yeah, there it goes. Now on a wet road, let's see how it goes. Yeah, baby. Some want to spin. Wheel spin, that is. But it won't make the screeching noise because of the wet road. Okay, the rain is increasing in terms of pace, which is a good thing because I start to enjoy the car even more. That's how brilliant it is. Now, where does the Ford Echo Sport actually excel? It's not only just in terms of driving dynamics and features, and of course, visual appeal as well. It is now also the fact that it is one of the cheapest cars to maintain in the segment, and that's largely to the fact due to Ford's child part strategy. Now, they call it something else now, but earlier it was known as child part strategy, and they also opened 45 odd dealerships in a day. So, obviously, the service network is growing. That said, 
you know service cost is among the cheapest in the segment and repairing the car is also among the cheapest in the segment however ford's quality of service although good could have been better considering that maruti suzuki and honda is actually ruling the roost when it comes to quality of service in the segment and that is largely because of the massive number of dealerships and cars sold by these two brands but ford is catching up and how and since i have owned a ford echo sport earlier i can tell you that service quality is good but there is scope of improvement but the cost of service is on the lower side it is actually cheaper than maruti suzuki as well that is the level of shock steer but that's also the level of grip in spite of the heavy rain just i can feel the communication from the steering as well as the wheels it does drive pretty well this car i mean it offers a lot of grip but look at that zen the tires are jutting out here in this place where i am right now northeast i see a lot of modified altos and of course 800s as well with the spare wheel mounted on the tailgate i think echo sport has been the car which has actually inspired this trend all right now this car won't easily aquaplane because the tires are good enough on this car but you can see there is just so much water logging on the road already with i think 10 minutes of rain which makes you wonder how i'm going to shoot this car from the outside because i'm heading even further to the hill station but i am just so looking forward to driving this car around the ghats it is an apt vehicle for the ghats but it is practical enough due to the good ride quality and of course decent amount of space on offer inside yes the rear seat space leaves a lot to be desired from but overall if you are a person who enjoys driving there's nothing which even comes close to the echo sport in the segment So how does this car actually compare to its rivals? Well, it is easily the best handling car in the segment. It has the most feel as well. The steering is great too. In terms of ride quality, the Tata Nexon is still the best somehow. And uh, overall balance between ride and handling is also great in the Echo Sport, but the ride quality isn't as great as the Nexons. And uh, the grip level is also great, but there's so much water logging on the road already. And uh, no, Echo planning cannot be felt because the tire size is big enough. But here, if I get hard onto the gas, I can see. there water spring all over the place as well if i let me get a bit right yep there you see lot of water spray oh my god there is so much water so much fun yep yes this is such a fun car and the rains are here in fact i need to open this right now yeah it is such a beautiful weather right now absolutely love the rains and i absolutely love the ford echo sport as well because it is such a fun car to drive whether it's a dry or the wet as well high speed stability is good downshift here onto the gas there it pulls hard and strong nicely meanwhile drop a gear and kind of disappear as well the motor doesn't feel that labored around the red line which happens to be 5000 rpm revving the motor clean and nice launch pulls hard and fast so much fun definitely puts a big smile on the face that guys is the ford echo sport diesel been by the petrol is also quite punchy and the automatic is also decent but it's really the eco boost which is the pick of the pack it just feels so fun to redline that car but this diesel is no less because you have both efficiency as well as performance anyways guys if you like this video you know what you have to do give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video i'll soon bye bye